and welcome to the Strumzy community call for April 18th. Uh, first thing on the agenda are PR and issues. Uh, I think I mentioned uh, some PRs here. Uh, so this one is the first. Uh, it's actually issue of PR. Uh, we have this as a planned feature, but it talks about vault integration for certificates. And I'm not entirely sure whether that's still valid. I think in general, we want to integrate more with Cert Manager rather than Vault. So maybe we should update it to make it more clear. Do you mean just add an additional comment to clarify the issue? Or? Yeah, and probably change the title to make it easier to find. I mean, if nothing else, also the licensing of world change since 2018, which is, I think, another reason to focus on the cert manager. Okay, the next one is the discussion we had here around this quota yes. plugin issue where we split the excluded principles by comma, but that doesn't work and we have to do it by semicolon, I guess. Uh, and I think there were several options discussed. I think Keith suggested to deprecate the original option and add a new option and then make sure in the code that only one of them is used. Uh, I think I suggested to other variants. Uh, one is to just treat it as a bug and change it without deprecating and adding new options just change the existing option. Other one somewhere in between would be to add a new option to configure the separator, uh, which might default to the original separator and that way keep things backwards compatible, but it can be changed to semicolon or whatever else to kind of configure what the user wants to use. And I guess we have to decide how are we going to handle this because that's blocking integration of the quota plugin into the streams operators and so on. So I thought to that we should just change it to this uh, semicolon. This, so it's 
kind of same as for the authorization on the Kafka side. But yeah, if uh, keeping the configuration option for the separator would make more sense, so I guess it's fine as well. Because as, as Keith mentioned in one of the comments, uh, like the users can specify also the name with the semicolon escaped and then can maybe some different separator they want to use. So having that option, I guess, makes sense. Anyone else has any opinions? Paulo? No, yes, I am for um, for treating it as a bug. Of course, having a, a way to specify the separator will be useful. So yeah, I'm with for this option, to be honest. Wait, so which one? Treating it as a bug and changing the separator or yes. making the separator configurable? Treating it no, as a bug. Treating it as a bug and changing, uh, yeah. Lukash, does it work for you? I guess it does. Yeah, I guess I have already the PR up there. So, a anyone else has any thoughts on it? So like this, does it make sense? Yeah. And just one question, would it make sense to add the option for specifying the separator in a different PR, let's say, to make it more modifiable, let's say? If you want to add the option to configure a separator, why not do it in the first place? Yeah, OK, I'm just asking if it would make sense for others to have it because I'm fine with having the semicolon there because it's in a Kafka. So it's just a question if someone would like to have it there. Well, I don't think that makes sense. Why should we risk that it breaks this, breaks it for someone and then add the option? If we want to add this option, then we should go with it right away and we avoid however small the risk might be that it breaks things for anyone in case anyone is using it by any coincidence. So yeah, I, I, I don't see why you would do one and then the other as well. Yep, yeah. yeah, you are right. Let's so we, go with so the semicolon. With this? Yeah, thanks. Okay. And finally, the next one is about the PR from Marco, which adds the new OAuth based configuration using the Kubernetes OAuth and the service account keys. And he actually called type. Uh, where is it? K8S dash OIDC. And I think that's super ugly and misleading. So I wonder if we should call it something like Kubernetes or service account or unfortunately, nobody else from the maintainers bothered to reply for two months, but 
should probably discuss it so that Marco can move forward with it. And so do you want to... to get so many opinions on this call? No, no. Do you want to remove uh, OIDC from the name or having something like Cube OIDC or Kubernetes OIDC? I don't know. I would want something what makes some sense to the users. It's easy to understand and easy to write without a typo. Is it, is it the OIDC that you don't like? You yeah, I think... Is it, would it be a bit confusing just having Kubernetes there? I think OIDC, a lot of the people might know, have no idea what does it mean. I don't know what it means, to be honest. Uh, and I think the dash isn't completely nice there either. Well, I guess that for people approaching to OAuth, uh, they know what IDC is, right? Well, and having my understanding well, of the idea uh, here is that, yeah, it's using OAuth underneath, but it's not like the OAuth authentication where you have to set up your own OAuth server and you have to configure it and you are expected to understand it. But it basically uses the internal Kubernetes infrastructure for the authentication. So I think, unfortunately, Marco isn't here. He might be able to explain it better or share his views. And I guess if we want, we can leave it for next time. But, but I don't think, my understanding is that people can basically use the service account for the authentication. So it's not completely clear what does it mean from guide as OADC. The point is if we use just Kubernetes, if then Kubernetes at some point provides another way to do the kind of the same, we are not able to, to differentiate the options. Yeah, but I don't know, maybe Fine, I can are, jump are, on so, the PR so are you saying more... are you saying that Kate's OIDC, Kate's dash OIDC works great for you? Or well, are you saying that maybe Kubernetes isn't the right choice either? Just Kubernetes, I'm not sure is the right choice if uh, at some point still Kubernetes provides an internal other technology for doing the same. And then you cannot distinguish between uh, this and the other just having Kubernetes. So maybe the acronym okay, that, is not great. That's but... fine. I'm not necessarily insisting that it's the two options I suggested, but. Okay, I will jump into the PR and see what it is and uh, maybe yeah, providing the feedback even on the name type. Okay, please everyone else do that as well if you have any opinions. Anyone wants to discuss any other PRs or issues outside of the issues for triage, which we'll get to later? Okay, the next section is proposals, but I don't think there are any new proposals. Uh, so unless someone has something special to proposals to discuss, then I guess we can move on. Okay, nothing. Oh, sorry, Jakob, there was a proposal that I, I don't know, I, I'm sort of associated with it, but I'm not sure whether I should spend any time on it. It was the, um, the ACLs one. I think that's possibly not happening. I don't know what to say to that. 
so my view is that this can live in its own community and show that it's useful and can be used through the type called custom authorizer because honestly, I don't think it's something we have resources to take over and maintain. And there doesn't seem to be any real technical reason why we should do it. So I voted minus 0 0.9 on it, which means that I'm pretty much against it, but I'm not going to block it if others approve it. And I think nobody else really commented on that or approved it. I guess Federico approved it, but it's non binding. And then the guy said that he wants to put it on hold, but didn't close it. So I don't know, should we close it or? I don't know what people think. To be honest, I left some comments, but I am not totally convinced about that. For this reason, I put uh, is on hold on myself as well. Yeah, you actually said that you pretty much agree with me. Yeah, not sure if we should close it. Uh, and... Yeah, maybe the right thing is closing, tagging the the guy and saying, uh, because it's on old, let's close it. And then uh, you can open again when it's the right time. So like this. Yep. Okay, so I guess that answered your question, Paul. Yes, yes, thank you. I think we may be in a similar situation with 112 as well. I don't know, maybe we can just ping here the author if he plans to incorporate the commands. Yeah, it's one month rust uh, from last uh, comments. Okay, anything else to proposals? If not, then I guess issue triage. So I actually marked some older issues which I found for triage so that we can discuss them again. 
So this one was something I opened based on Tom's request. And I think several people showed some interest into doing this, but I have absolutely no idea what does it mean. So I think we need to get back to this and discuss what does it really mean. But maybe we should leave it for next time as uh, Tom isn't able to join the afternoon meetings. Yes. Okay. This one is some two years old bug about some service token refreshing. Which isn't really clear if this is still an issue or not an issue. To be honest, just close it. Typing is hard. Wow, why do I close the window? window? Okay, so next one is almost two years old as well, and I don't really follow the idea or whether this is still valid. I don't see Kyle, but I guess Paolo, you might have some idea. So first of all, to be honest, I don't remember why I tagged Kate. <laughs> Maybe Kate knows. <laughs> but uh, I, I guess that uh, at that time, while we were working around the cruise control integration, we were looking for something to create an unbalanced cluster in order to, you know, uh, trying uh, everything from the operator perspective to generate proposal through cruise control but we didn't get to anything useful so I, I i i don't know kate do you remember why i targeted you you were using some tool for doing this stuff i assume i was doing something for us to then test out our process in terms of rebalancing the cluster off the top of my head i can't remember what tool i particularly used but i suspect i just Oh, oh. Mm. I, was gonna, I feel like, yeah, I suspect I didn't use any tool. I think I might have been doing tests about the same time around disks filling up or things like that. And I think I, because we were just testing process rather than like what's actually happening, I think I just exec into the pods and created large files to fill up the disk space. So I think probably the answer to your question was, no, I didn't use any particular tools for my tests around this. Okay, thanks. So while I think that, yeah, it could be useful every something to, to create an unbalanced, an artificial unbalanced cluster, I don't think that we have time for this. Uh, there is also a link to some Tom Cooper uh, repo, some oh, Python okay. stuff. Should we close it? Yes, yeah. At least for me, yeah. Kyle is not on the call, but I think so.
good so we got rid of some issues i think this is a good way if you run into some other issues which doesn't move anyone and you are not sure it still makes sense then uh yeah marking it again for triage is a good way how to deal with them so the next issues are a bit newer so this one is about system tests they do not seem to collect the logs for the init containers so uh yeah, if for some reason you break something in the init containers, then the system tests in Azure are not really useful because you will not find out what's wrong. So it would be great to have those collected. Yeah, I agree. We are planning to rewrite the log collector also with the tests for it. So I think we can include it in that one. Okay, so I guess we don't set it as help needed. If you plan to rewrite it anyway, and you get yeah. back to it. Yeah. Okay. So the next system test issue comes from the work around JBot support in Craft. There's a bunch of tests using JBot which are currently disabled when running system tests in craft but they are actually not adapted to use craft either so they cannot be just enabled and run because they don't deploy the controllers or something like that so that should be looked into and fixed i think you can assign me i can take a look on that it was you marsh right yes Right, thanks. Okay. Next one. So this is from some user to extend the JMX options to all other components currently they are supported only i think for kafka zookeeper connect and mirror maker if i remember correct mirror maker 2 if i remember correctly but not for the other parts such as the operators or bridge cruise control and so on i guess but to be honest I don't think there was really, it didn't seem like the user really planned to use it. At least that was my read on it, but rather open it to have it everywhere. And I'm not sure we want to have this everywhere just for the sake of having it everywhere, especially with a lot of people complaining that it anyway doesn't work easily with outside of the cluster access and so on. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> totally agree. So what do we do with this? Well, for sure we are not planning to work on this. Yeah, but I mean, even if someone contributes it, it's reviews, maintenance, system tests. Yeah. Is that bad to refuse it? <sighs> I don't know. I would not refuse it if I was convinced that someone wants to use it for something that makes sense. But I don't know. Read the discussion and I'm not entirely... I'm not entirely sure about it. At the end, the issue starts basically just by saying that, yeah, it would be nice to have it there for coherency reasons. 
I don't think we want to have the effort for coherency reasons. Coherency is great, but it's not worth, I guess, for this one. Because the effort is is more than the outcome or the advantages that you can get. So should we reject it? Yes, at least, yeah, it's my opinion. Okay, so let me try to write it somehow. make it sound a bit nicer it's just you no know. Like this, does it make sense? Yeah, that's good to me. Next one. So this is a bug from a user that when we are generating the JKS stores or PKCS12 stores, the passwords appear in the process uh, table and can be in theory read by someone else. I uh, try to explain that these are basically one-off passwords. And if you have access to the key stores, you have also access to the unencrypted PEM files and you don't really need the password. So I don't think this is really any security leak. That said, it might trigger all kinds of things. So maybe this is something what we want to mark as a help wanted or something if someone wants to get rid of the passwords. I guess at some point we will also move to use the pen files directly and that might get rid of these passwords, but not sure when that happens. So maybe if in the meantime someone wants to write them to a file and use them from a file or something, it will work. Yeah. Yeah, we can even ask to the user if he's willing to, to help. It makes sense to me.
like this. Yep. So we mark it as help on it, I guess. Not sure some shell stuff is a good start to be honest, so maybe like this. Okay. So next issue is evergreen about someone trying to hack the default key stores because of Mongo connector. But I actually found out that the Mongo connector now does support some proper options for configuring trust stores and key stores. So I think this should not be needed and we should reject it. Yeah. So like this. Uh, this one is about the report tool to not require a cluster name. And there's a related PR to that as well before it was triage. Uh, but I don't think this is a good thing because if you don't require the cluster name, it can scrape even unintended logs and data. And they would be published publicly. So I don't think this is definitely not the right option. I think if someone would want to do it, one can add a special option to mark that you want to scrape everything regardless. But I'm personally not convinced the tool is worth investments into the maintenance and reviews and testing and so on. But yeah, maybe others have different thoughts. Yeah, I agree with you. On which part that we don't want to invest into it or? Yeah, yeah, options? yeah, exactly, exactly. Because at some point we will discover that uh, we are not, uh, we, we don't have much time for maintaining this and it will end up the same as, um, I, I don't remember the, the name of the tool that was for, I think, gold. Yeah, and gold just topic backup about... or something like that. Just don't ask about things such as canary. Yeah. <laughs> we already had some discussion around this tool about testing, right? Which was difficult to test and yeah. or it was another one. Yeah, it was this one. So yeah, I would say no. You know what? Yeah, to not to, to reject, so to not implement this. Okay. 
So how do we write it? So like this, does that make sense? Yes. Should we close the PR as well? Yeah. Okay, uh, you more. This one is about topic operator and how it overrides some fields related to rebalancing. But we don't have, do we have Federico? No, neither Federico nor Tom Bentley. And I'm not sure I understand how does it relate to cruise control. as the issue talks about Kafka reassigned partitions, but then it also shares some cruise control stuff. Well, I, I so as I see, he's mentioning uh, using reassigned partition or running a Kafka rebalance. So okay. maybe, maybe they were trying problem. both ways. For both. Yeah, so anyway, Fede seems to provide a kind of a way to solve this issue. So I should wait for, for him or for the user trying the suggestion. Yeah, but I mean, maybe we should just leave it for next time to see. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's keep as an it's triage. Uh, how it goes, but I think if it would interfere with the Kafka rebalance, then I would say we need to deal with it somehow, whether it's by 
ignoring these options by default using this option which Federico suggested or Yeah, let's give it for the next time. I guess that would make sense. I guess it does. Yep. Okay, I'm running out of time. So the next issue was opened by me. So I knew already before that we don't get the list of the plugins available in Kafka Connect when the connector operator is disabled. But what I realized while refactoring the, the code is that we don't update the local levels either. And that seems to be not nice. But I'm not sure what's the easy solution. So the reason why we don't do anything talking with the Connect API when the connector operator is disabled is because we don't create the network policy to give the operator access to the REST API. And without that, we actually don't know if we will have access if the networking defaults to denying communication. But if we create the network policy, even when the user, when the connector operator is disabled, then uh, yeah, we might break things for users using it today. So. Yeah, I guess our options are ignore it and just document it as a known issue. Uh, or we can just create the network policy and tell everyone who runs into problems to create their own policy. Or we can try to do the logging configuration and just fail if the network policy is missing and leave it to the user to fix it. Or I guess we can build some separate mechanism to roll the pods. For example, when the logging changes, but I'm not really sure what's the best approach for that. Anyone has any thoughts on this? Well, for components that don't use the REST API to uh, manage their logging, you would use option three, right? Yeah. So if you were to do it for Kafka, you would uh, have to roll the pods. So I wonder if it's what we do. Obviously, it's more work than uh, I think uh, one and two, I mean, as you say, have uh, compatibility issues. Uh, if we want to do something, I don't need to do free. Um, I think we should do it because it's uh, this is important for debugging. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it makes most sense, but it's not nice because you need you have two different mechanisms, so you need to test two things, you need to maintain two things, and so on. Yeah. So anyone disagrees with going with option three?
Okay. And maybe we can mark it as help wanted and have some contributor to do it. Because to be honest, nobody complained about this for a long time. So maybe it's not super urgent to fix it today. Or? Yeah. Okay. What is this? And that leaves us a last issue, which is about being able to reload certificates without rolling update. So I noted here some things why it's not as simple as it sounds, but it could definitely be a useful feature which would need a proposal, I guess. Or yeah, but as far as I understood, it's not feasible yet, right? Well, because of Kafka limitations. So I did the keep in Kafka, which allows us to reload any certificates, regardless right. the sums and so on, but that's only in 3.7. So, yeah, we basically cannot easily implement it while still supporting 3.6. So, yeah, it's a few months, I guess. But, I mean, you anyway need a proposal, so it's not like the work cannot start on it. Okay, yep. And actually, I already had some thoughts about it while working on the KIP, so... I might have a look at it. And that should be it for the triage. Anyone has anything else to triage? If not, then uh, I guess we are running out of time. So let's leave the Kafka access operator for next time. Anyway, I think Kate, who knows most about it, had to go. And I guess just note for everyone watching the recording, this or being here now, the Streamsicon agenda is now out. So you can check it out and you should register. And of course, join the conference. And that's it for the agenda. Anyone has anything else for the remaining three minutes? Could I ask just a quick question on the status of the craft mode, uh, if that's okay? Yeah. So, <clears throat> do, do you have something particular or? In yeah. General? So I guess just just looking at the documentation in, in zero thirty nine zero, um, there was um, a very clear warning in red there that it wasn't ready for production uh, mode yet. But it has been removed in 040, which I guess implies that it is okay to use in production. But I guess I see that the feature gate status is in beta. So I guess that's where my question comes in really. Does the fact that it's in beta imply that it's not recommended for production or, or maybe it doesn't imply that? No, the status being in beta means basically that it's enabled by default. And yeah, I. Not sure I want to comment on it being ready for production, but that means that on the streams side, we don't see any major issues or any, we don't see any things changing in the future in some com incompatible way or something. Okay. So I think you can try it if you want. There are still, if you check the 040 docs, there are still some limitations which are partially in Strimzy, partially in Kafka, like for example, in Strimzy, the JBOT support 
in craft will be only in 0.41. Uh, and in Kafka itself, the scaling of the controllers isn't really finished yet. So you can't really scale the controller nodes and so on. So yeah, there are still some limitations, but as long as you can live with them, then uh, yeah, I guess it's up to you now, but we are not aware of any major other major issues with Streamsia. Okay, that's great, thank you. Anyone, anything else? If not, then uh, thanks a lot for joining and see you in two weeks. See you all. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.